Monday, Thursday in July service, 729-22, p.m. And our prelude tonight is the weeping tree. All right, thank you, choir. That was very pretty. Good evening, once again, everybody.
Welcome to tonight's service. Tonight we present Monday, Thursday again. For those of you who couldn't hear it back on 418.22, with no interruptions, we think about that path to the cross and how it rectifies itself with us even now in certain situations that we get ourselves into. Receive the call to worship. A table is set before us. A feast is prepared for us. A meal of bread and wine, of meat and bitter herbs. The Lord calls us to this supper of remembrance. The Lord calls us to serve and be served. As we break the bread and share the cup, our understanding may fail us, but we will never forget Christ's example. We will never forget the full extent of his love. And now the opening reading of this service. Now this service is a little different than, than, your, than the traditional services that we do week in and week out. This one, there's music, reading, but there's no announcements, there's no offertory, there is no, it's very different. So our opening reading tonight, Isaiah 53. Paints a picture of this whole service. It was our pains he carried. Who believes what we've heard and seen? Who would have thought God's saving power would look like this? The servant grew up before God, a scrawny seedling, a scrubby plant, in a parched field. There was nothing to try to about him, nothing to cause us to take a second look. He was looked down on and passed over. A man who suffered, who knew pain firsthand. One look at him, and people turned away. We looked down on him, thought he was scum, but the fact is, it was our pains he carried, our disfigurements, all the things wrong with us. We thought he brought it on himself, that God was punishing him for his own failures. But it was our sins that did that to him, that ripped and tore and crushed him, our sins. He took the punishment and that made us whole. Through his bruises we get healed. We're all like sheep who wandered off and gotten lost. We've all done our own thing, gone our own way. And God has piled our sins. Everything We've done wrong on him, on him. He was beaten, he was tortured, but he didn't say a word. Like a lamb taken to be slaughtered and like a sheep being sheared, he took it all in silence, justice miscarried, and he was let up. And did anyone really know what was happening? He died without a thought for his own welfare, beaten, bloody for the sins of my people. They buried him with the wicked, threw him in a grave with the rich man. Even though he never heard a soul or said one word that wasn't true, still it's what God had in mind all along, to crush him with pain. The plan was that he give himself as an offering for sin, so that he see life come from it, life, life, and more, and more life. And God's plan will deeply prosper through him. Out of that terrible travail of soul, he'll see that it's worth it and be glad he did it. Through what he experienced, my righteous one, my servant will make many righteous ones as he himself carries the burden of their sins. Therefore, I reward him extravagantly, the best of everything, the highest honor, because he looked death in the face and didn't flinch, because he embra embraced the company of the lowest. He took on his own shoulders the sins of the many. He took up the cause of all the black sheep. And our opening hymn tonight is 3.24, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the prince of glory died, my richest gain. I can't. 
of the lost and for contempt on all my pride. Forbid, Lord, that I should boast, save me the death of Christ my God. All the vague things that charm me most, I sacrifice them to his blood. He from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love clumbing the dam. Did ever such love and sorrow me or thorns compose so rich a crown? <laughs> Were the whole realm of nature mine that were an offering far too small. Oh, amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. Open in prayer. Lord, tonight we think about your path to the cross. It reminds of those 14 stages from being a savior to becoming nothing. Remind us again and again, you are always our savior. Help us this night to love one another as you have loved us. Guide our hearts and minds to Calvary's mountain. Amen. So traditionally, I do this service from palms to passion. The publishing world the publishing lost world. a legend last summer when Lou Kirby, the former So the next reading is Mark 11, 1 to 11. When they were near in Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany on Mount Olives, he sent off two of the disciples with instructions. Go to the village across from you. As soon as you enter, you'll find the colt tethered, one that has never yet been bred. Untie it and bring it. If anyone asks, what are you doing? Say, the master needs him and will return him right away. They went and found the colt tied to a door at the street corner and untied it. Some of those standing there said, What are you doing on tying that colt? The disciples replied, Exactly as Jesus had instructed them, and the people left them alone. They brought the colt to Jesus, spread their coats on it, and he mounted. The people gave him a wonderful welcome. Some throwing their coats on the street, others spread out rushes they had cut in the fields. Running ahead and following after, they were calling out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in God's name. Blessed the coming kingdom of our father David, Hosanna in highest heaven. He entered Jerusalem, then entered the temple. He looked around, taking it all in, but by now it was late, so he went back to Bethany with the twelve. Hosanna, loud Hosanna, the little children say. Through pillar, court, and temple, the lovely anthem ring. To Jesus who had blessed them, close folded to his breast. The 
children say their praises, the simplest and the best. From all living they follow, mid and so would take from the bitter palm branch wave it. And chanting clear and loud, the Lord of earth and heaven rode out in lowly state, nor scorned that little children should on his bidding wait. Hosanna in the highest. That ancient song we sing, for Christ is our Redeemer, the Lord of heaven, our King. Oh, may we ever praise Him with heart and life and voice, and in His blissful presence. Eternally rejoice. Director of Sacred Publications at Shawnee Press passed away. He was a remarkable man who had a great impact on my life. The next Shawnee Press classic was dedicated to him when it was first released, and I am glad to present it to you again, this time in memory of one of the finest Christian men I have ever known. Here is on the road to Jerusalem. So Luke 22, 1 to 23. The Feast of Unleavened Bread, also called Passover, drew near. The high priests and religion scholars were looking for a way to do away with Jesus, but fearful of the people, they were also looking for a way to cover their tracks. That's when Satan entered Judas, the one called Iscariot. He was one of the twelve. Leading the others, he conferred with the high priests and the temple guards about how he might betray Jesus to them. They couldn't believe their good luck and agreed to pay him well. He gave them his word and started looking for a way to betray Jesus, but out of sight of the crowd. The day of unleavened bread came, the day the Passover lamb was butchered. Jesus sent Peter and John on, saying, Go prepare the Passover for us so we can eat, eat it together. They said, Where do you want us to do this? He said, Keep your eyes open. As you enter the city, a man carrying a wire jug will meet you. 
Follow him home, then speak with the owner of the house. The teacher wants to know, where is the guest room where I can eat the Passover meal with my disciple? He will show you a spacious second-story room, swept and ready. Prepare the meal there. They left, found everything just as he told them, and prepared the Passover meal. When it was time, he sat down, all the apostles with him, and said, You have no idea how much I have looked forward to eating this Passover meal with you before I enter my time of suffering. It's the last one I'll eat until we all eat it together in the kingdom of God. Taking the cup, he blessed it and said, Take this and pass it among you. As for me, I'll not drink wine again until the kingdom of God arrives. Taking bread, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Eat it in my memory. He did the same thing with the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant written in my blood, blood poured out for you. Do you realize that the hand of the one who is betraying me is at this moment on this table? It's true that the Son of Man is going down a path already marked out. No surprises there. The one who turns a man turns traitor to the Son of Man. This is doomsday. They immediately became suspicious of each other and began quizzing one another, wondering who might be about to do this.
Each, this is my body, So on the night he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread, he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he took the cup. And after blessing it, he said, In this cup is the new covenant of my blood, which is poured out for you. So as often as we eat of the bread and we drink from the cup, we are reminded that he is the living Christ who is alive even now in 2022. Let's pray. Lord, your table is a symbol for so many people. It could be a symbol of hope, and it is a reminder of this beautiful of what you did for us. And what this service is about. Amen. The Garden of Gethsemane, Peter denies Jesus. Get ready for trouble. Within minutes, they were bickering over who of them would end up the greatest. But Jesus inter intervened. Kings like to throw their weight around, and people in authority like to give themselves fancy titles. It's not going to be that way with you. Let the senior among become you like the junior. Let the, let the leader act the part of the servant. Who would you rather be the one? Who would you rather be? Who would you rather be? The one who eats the dinner? Or the one who serves the dinner. You rather eat and be served, right? But I've taken my place among you as the one who serves. And you've stuck with me through thick and thin. Now I confer, confer on you with the royal authority my father conferred on me, so you can eat and drink at my table and my camp and be strengthened as you take a responsibility among the congregation of God's people. Simon, stay on your toes. Satan has tried his best to separate all of you from me. Like chaff from wheat. Simon, I pray for you in particular that you not give in or give out. When you have come through the time of testing, turn to your companions and give them a fresh start. Peter said, Master, I'm ready for anything with you. I'd go to jail for you. I'd die for you. Jesus said, I'm sorry I have to tell you this, Peter, but before the rooster crows, you will have to three times deny that you know me. Then he said, when I sent you out and told you to travel light, to take out only the bare necessities, 
Did you get along all right? Certainly, they said. We got along just fine. He said, this is different. Get ready for trouble. Look to what you'll need. There are difficult times ahead. Pawn your coat and get a sword. What was written in scripture, he was lumped in with the criminals, gets its final meeting and meet. Everything written about me is now coming to a conclusion. They said, look, master, two swords. But he said, enough of that. No more sword talk. Leaving there, he went, as he so often did, to the Mount Olives. The disciples followed him. When they arrived at the place, he said, pray that you don't give into temptation. He pulled away from them about a stone's throw, knelt down and prayed, Father, remove this cup from me, but please, not what I want. What do you want? At once, an angel from heaven was at his side, strengthening him. He prayed on all the harder, sweat run from him like drops of blood, poured off his face. He got up from prayer, went back to the disciples and found them asleep. Drugged by grief, he said, what business do you have sleeping? Get up, pray so you won't give into temptation. No sooner were the words out of his mouth than the crowd showed up. Judas, the one from the twelve in the lead, he came right up to Jesus to kiss him. Jesus said, Judas, you would betray the Son of Man with a kiss? When those with him saw what was happening, they said, Master, shall we fight? One of them took a swing at the chief priest, sir, and cut off his right ear. Jesus said, let him be even in this. And touching the servant's ear, he healed him. Jesus spoke to a come, high priest, temple police, re re religion leaders. What is this? Jumping me with swords and clothes of it as if I were a dangerous criminal. Day, day after day, I've been with you in the temple, and you have not so much as lifted a hand against me. But do it your way. It's a dark night, a dark hour. And our hint for this part is, leave me the cavalry. King of my life, I crown you now. Yours will the glory be. Lest I forget your thorny crown. Lead me to Calvary. Show me the tomb where you were laid, tenderly mourned and wept. Angels in robes of light array guarded you while you slept, lest I forget Gethsemane, lest I forget your agony, lest I forget your love for me, lead me to Calvary. Shows you me now the empty tomb, all that you said was true. Lest I forget Gethsemane, lest I forget your agony, lest I forget your love for me, lead me to Calvary. May I be willing, Lord, to bear daily my cross for you. Even the cup of grief to share, give me a heart renewed. Lest I forget Gethsemane, lest I forget your agony. Lest I forget your love for me, lead me to 
to Calvary. Lest I forget this enemy, lest I forget your agony, lest I forget your love for me, lead me to Calvary. to Calvary, lead me to When I have more questions than answers When the dawn seems distant in the darkness Jesus, let your Spirit speak softly Oh, to feel the trust you felt In that garden where you Let my life reflect the words formed there upon the tongue. Let me live the prayer of Gethsemane. Not my will, but thine be done. Jesus, give me strength. Just to listen when the ways of my will drown your whisper. Keep your voice of wisdom so near me. Oh, to feel the trust you felt in that garden where you. Reflect the words Born there upon the tongue Let me live The prayer of Gethsemane Not my will But thine be done Teach me to reach Beyond my human
By the way, what you can hear in the background is fireworks. They have the fair time. A rooster crowed. Arrested Jesus, they marched him off and lifted him into the house of the chief priest. Peter followed, but at a safe distance. In the middle of the courtyard, some people had started a fire and were standing around it, trying to keep warm. One of them, servant made sin at the fire, noticed him, then took a second look and said, This man was with him. He denied, Woman, I don't even know him. A short time later, someone else noticed him and said, you're one of them. But Peter denied it. Man, I am not. About an hour later, someone else spoke up really adamant. He's got to have been with him. He's got Galilean written all over him. Peter said, man, I don't know what you're talking about. At that very moment, the last word, hardly off his lips, a rooster crowed. Just then, the master turned and looked at Peter. Peter remember what the master had said. Before the rooster crows, you'll deny me three times. He went out and cried and cried and cried. The men in charge of Jesus began poking fun at them, slapping them around. They put a blindfold on him and taunted, who hit you that time? They were having a grand time with him. When it was morning, the religious leaders of the people and the high priests and scholars all got together and they and brought him before their high council. They said, are you the Messiah? He answered, if I said yes, you wouldn't believe me. If I asked what you meant by your question, you wouldn't answer me. So here's what I have to say. From here on, the Son of Man takes his place at God's right hand, the place of power. They all said, so you admit your claim to be the Son of God. You're the ones who keep saying it, he said. But they had made up their minds. Why do we need any, any more evidence? We've all heard him as good as say it himself. And now they go to dark disseminate.
Okay, so the method is just have us to fall in this part. And let's talk about feeling betrayed. Now, what is being betrayed like? Well, when we, when someone does something to us that we don't approve of, maybe, maybe, you got into an accident and they took off. Maybe they took time from you. Whatever the case may be, it is like being betrayed. And we and we have been talking about this in the Feeling Left Out series because it falls under the same principles of being like, you know, why things are a certain why things are a certain way at the moment. Now I'm not saying that it's all bad news, but what I'm saying is we have to be careful and we have to be able to recognize the fact that when something goes wrong we identify the behavior and we sort of figure out why a certain thing happened you know even to this day yeah i know i was betrayed by charlie but the question became why? And obviously those are answers that cannot be answered here. And obviously those questions can only be answered by the one person that did that. And this is kind of a really short message because I'm pretty tired. Uh, we will talk more about this next week. Get out of here. Okay.
through 23. Then they all took Jesus to Pilate and began to bring the charges against him. They said, we found this man undermining our law and order, forbidden taxes to be paid to Caesar, set himself up as Messiah King. Pilate asked him, is this true that you're the king of the Jews? Those are your words, not mine, Jesus replied. Pilate told the high priest and the accompanying crowd, I find nothing wrong here. He seems harmless enough to me. But they were vehement. He's stirring up unrest among the people with his teaching, serving the peace everywhere, stirring in Galilee and now all through Judea. He's a dangerous man. Endangering the peace. And Pilate heard that. He asked, so he's a Galilean, realizing that he probably properly came under Herod's jurisdiction. He passed the buck to Herod, who just happened to be in Jerusalem for a few days. Herod was delayed when Jesus showed up. He had waited a long, he had wanted for a long time to see him. He'd heard so much about it. He hoped to see him do something spectacular. He covered him with questions. Jesus didn't answer, not one word. But the high priests and religion scholars were right there, saying their feet, strident and shrill in their accusation. Mildly offended, Jesus turned to them. Herod turned on Jesus. His soldiers joined in taunting and jeering. Then they dressed him in an elaborate king costume and sent him back to Pilate. That day, Herod and Pilate became thick as thieves, always before they had kept their distance. And now, Lamb of God.
Then Pilate called in the high priest, rulers, and others have said, You brought this man to me as a disturber of the peace. I examined him in front of all of you and found there was nothing to your charge. And neither did, neither did Herod. He has sent him back here with a clean bill of health. It's clear that he's done and nothing wrong, that anything deserving death. I'm going to warn him to watch his step and let him go. At that, the crowd went wild. Kill him! Give us Barabbas. Barabbas had been thrown in prison for starting a riot in the city and for murder. Pilate still wanted to let Jesus go, and so spoke out again. But they kept shouting back, Crucify! Crucify him! He tried a third time. But for what crime? I found nothing in him deserving death. I'm going to warn him, watch him step, and let him go. But they kept at it, a shouted, and demanded that he be crucified. And finally, they shouted it down. 
Pilot gave in and gave them what they wanted. He released the man from in prison for rioting and murder, and they gave Jesus to do. They gave them Jesus to do whatever they wanted. All right, now it's set me free.
As they led him off, they made Simon, a man from Cyrene, who had to be coming in from the countryside, carry the cross behind Jesus. A huge crowd of people followed, along with women weeping and carrying on. At one point, Jesus turned to the women and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, don't cry for me. Cry for yourself and for your children. The time has come when they'll say, Lucky the women who never conceived. Lucky the wombs that never gave birth. Lucky the breasts that never gave milk. Then they'll then they'll start calling to the mountains, fall down on us, call into the hills, cover us up. If people do these things to live, to a live green tree, can you imagine what they'll do with dead wood? Two others, both criminals, were taken along with them for execution. When they got to the place called Skull Hill, they crucified him along with the criminals. One, his right. The other on his left. Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Divided up his clothes, they threw dice for him. The people stood there staring at him, and the ringleaders made faces time. He saved others. Let's see him save himself. The Messiah of God, huh? the chosen, ha. Huh? The soldiers also came up and poked fun at him, making a game of it. They toasted him with sorrow. On. So you're the king of the Jews. Save yourself. Prayed over him was a son. This is the king of the Jews. One of the crowns hanging alongside cursed him. Some Messiah you are. Save yourself. Save us. But the other one made him shut up. Have you no fear of God? You're again the same as him. We deserve this, but not him. He did nothing to deserve this.
The burial of Jesus. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you enter your kingdom. He said, Don't worry, I will. Today you will join me in paradise. By now it was noon, the whole earth became dark. The darkness lasted three hours, a total blackout. The temple curtain split right down the middle. Jesus called loudly, Father, I place my life in your hands. Then he breathed his last. When the captain there saw what happened, he honored God. This man was innocent, a good man and innocent. All who came around as spectators and to watch the show, when they, when they saw what actually happened, were overcome with grief and headed home. Those who knew Jesus well, along with the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a respectful distance and kept vigil. There was a man by the name of Joseph, a member of the Jewish High Council, a man of good heart and good character. He had, got, he had not gone along with the plans and actions of the council. His hometown was the Jewish village of Arimathea. He lived in alert expectation of the kingdom of God. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Taking him down, he wrapped him in a linen shroud and placed him to a tomb, chiseled into the rock, a tomb never yet used. It was the day before the Sabbath, the Sabbath just about to begin. The women who had been companions of Jesus from Galilee followed along. They saw the tomb where Jesus' body was placed. Then they went back to prepare burial spices and perfumes. They rested quietly on the Sabbath as commanded.
Waste.